And the second problem in this section, we are doing a little bit of design work. Uh, this is still a compression spring, still made out of music wire. And the intent is that it, um, it handles two inches of deflection and at that point it uh, is supporting 20 pounds. That is the force is 20 pounds when Y or the deflection is two inches. Uh, the solid height cannot extend, uh, height or length cannot extend one inch, and the free length cannot extend or exceed four inches. So some constraints there. From that problem statement, you can design a spring as long as you're comfortable making a little number of assumptions. Um, so the wire type is actually given the problem. So we've got that. And there you can see all the parameters A and M, which would be used to calculate the ultimate strength and then the elastic properties are given in that uh, table 10.5. I'm assuming that the ends are squared and ground. For no reason whatsoever I'm making that assumption. Uh, any of the four conditions could equally apply in this problem given that I don't know anything else about it. Uh, F max is tw uh, 20 and Y max is 2. Those are not really assumptions because they're given in the problem. I'm just restating them. I'm using a design factor at the solid height 1.2 to kind of match the flow chart that I'm using. Uh, this squiggly Greek thing, which uh, we were calling Zeta, it's actually Xi, uh, we found out. Um, we can always call it squiggly Greek thing, 0.15. I'm um, using an as-wound spring as opposed to set remove. That informs uh, the percentage of ultimate strength I'll use for the shear strength and yield. Uh, it also tells me how to move through the design flow chart, which I'll show here in a second. I'm also deciding on the wire diameter now. Uh, now that is an assumption that uh, it would be easy to get wrong up front, and if so, you just end up with a spring that's uh, that has some strange parameters. Either it has way too many coils required, too few, um, the mean diameter has to be way too large. So something would be off if uh, if that wire size was particularly bad. Now the flow chart here, as mentioned, uh, we've got a free spring, and it is as wound. So. This is the, the path we're going to go through to get out the mean coil diameter. So again, these, these calculations, primarily C, but also going through alpha and beta, these are set up to design a spring that should uh, be fairly practical given the wire choice up front, um, as long as that wire choice itself is reasonably practical. All right, so from the A and the B or rather the A and the M values given just a second ago we can calculate SUT as 201,000 divided by the wire diameter raised to M is .145 and we get 289 900 and then the yield strength for that same uh, case since it's an as set design is .45 SUT or 130,500 and then to uh, follow through the flowchart, we need to calculate alpha, which is SYS over 1.2. So all alpha is is the allowable shear strength. <clears throat> Beta, we have 8, 1 plus xi times F max divided by pi times the wire diameter squared. And that gives me 91.51. <clears throat> and C now this is a large expression here. You can refer back to the handouts for the actual equations. Maybe this gives you a sense of why I uh, frequently mention how easy or how much easier it is to work these problems in a spreadsheet. So if you're doing design by hand and you have to iterate, it's quite the thing to have to work out over and over again. 
But here we get a C value, a spring index of 10.53, which is within the allowable range for this design process. That gives me a sense straight away that my wire diameter choice was okay. That's all we need to get the, the mean diameter, which is dot eight four two four. I'm just going to think about that number for a second. If I know this spring is no more than four inches long, the spring four inches long and about dot eight four eight five inches diameter, that's pretty reasonable. So just from a geometric kind of sanity check viewpoint, everything seems okay. And from this point on, I'm just following the flowchart. The Bergstrasser factor comes out as 1.128. The shear strength and that subscript S, S again is for solid because the, uh, the whole design here is to have that factor safety of 1.2 at the solid height. So we should get that. F max. Uh, we have everything to put in there. I won't rewrite everything. 106,300. And since the design process already has taken into account the shear strength and the factor of safety desired, we should have a factor of safety of 1.2. And there's a little bit of, uh, in my calculation, I suppose some round off going on, so I'll end up with, actually that's not even, 1.22 1 is what I, what I got here. So at this point, I've got to I've essentially verify that my wire size is okay. I've determined the outer diameter, or rather the mean coil diameter necessary to go along with that. Now I can just determine the specific spring uh, quantities because you yeah, keep in mind all these calculations use the mean coil diameter. Uh, you don't really buy springs or specify springs based on that. You use the outer diameter. So it does make sense to, uh, to recalculate that. So that's dot eight four three plus oh eight dot nine two three inches. The number of active coils comes from the equation G, the shear modulus, times Y diameter to the fourth, times Y max. Divided by eight, mean coil diameter cubed times F max. And this is another one. I think the, the problem statement said the maximum no, actually, it was looking for two inches of compression, so I do need to use the two there. And F max was 20. Ten dot oh six turns. Uh, the total number, since I have closed ground ends, I end up adding two additional turns to that. And now that dot 0.5, um, you, you can have any percentage of a partial turn. That's that's very possible. Um, I don't know that you'd want to specify anything that specific. You may go to 12 dot, uh, 12 dot, I don't know, 12 and a half, or just round down to 12 and then tweak the uh, the mean diameter to fit. Um, you could, in theory, turn 12 dot 0.5 turns. And if you have one of those very precise CNC machines, it wouldn't be that hard to do, but. Um, you could drop that to 12, tweak the mean coil diameter, and end up just fine. The shut length, about 964 inches, and the free length, Uh, 
I'm using the uh, the um, zeta factor here as well because that that's the load. I, I based this calculation on 15% overload, so I'm also the the length that it's compressed at the shut length is also 15% over nominal. So this is just uh, the Xi factor added in here again, uh, and that is your Y max. So all of these quantities right here essentially are what would be used to uh, fully specify the spring.